Hello, I'm Bill Henry. This video will focus on condenser water reset and demonstrate the savings that can be achieved using this strategy with your chiller plant. This is the display of an operating chiller plant optimizer and it will help me to demonstrate how and when the savings occur. The display is part of a benchtop test stand that includes a chiller and plant simulator as explained in a previous video titled Optimizing the Chiller Plant for Overall Efficiency, Part 1. So enough of this, let's get started. I will step through various operating scenarios and provide a written record that you can review if need be by pausing the video. Let's look at the bottom left hand corner of the display and you'll see that the condenser water temperature set point is in manual mode. I want to ensure that our manual set point for the condenser water temperature is at 85 degrees Fahrenheit and we can actually input that right here there are two system conditions that are input into the uh, simulator and that is the outside wet bulb and the initial load and currently the wet bulb is set for 68.4 and the load is set for uh, about a thousand tons and unlike some other systems the chiller plant optimizer does not have to monitor the wet bulb but we do monitor the actual load switching screens again and we'll see what our systems are doing the cooling tower fan speed is 100% uh, operating condenser water temperature set point is 85 our actual condenser water temperature is 85 degrees Fahrenheit so far we've recorded this bit of data with the wet bulb at 68.4 the simulator load is set at a thousand tons our entering condenser water temperature is 85 our fan speed is 100 percent now we can look at our power demand for the chiller 588 kilowatts our chiller efficiency at 0.594 kW per ton and we're actually recording a load of 987 tons we can also look at the first screen and we can see uh, the kW per ton for the chiller and our chiller plant kW per ton which is operating about 0.74 kW per ton alright so I've input that data as well and you can just see the record here now we're going to reduce the simulator load to 500 tons and the wet bulb will stay constant The biggest change is the coolant tower fan speed. It has dropped to about 55-56% uh, and we're still operating at an actual condensed water temperature of uh, 85 or 84.9 degrees Fahrenheit. So our power demand has dropped to 249 kilowatts. Uh, we're operating at a efficiency, chiller efficiency of 0.502 kW per ton and our chiller load as we can see has dropped to 497 tons. We can look at our plant kW per ton and it is about 0.66. This change has nothing to do with the condenser water reset as we haven't uh, changed the condenser water temperature. This is all due to the fact that we're using a variable speed chiller. Let me now show you a couple of the chiller curves. Here we have two curves for the same chiller except that the first one is operating with a constant speed uh, drive motor and the second one, the lower one, is a variable speed. These two curves came from York Calc for the same chiller except in the first instance we have a constant speed drive and in the second instance we have a variable speed drive and you can see how the improvement 
in at uh, part load with efficiency. Here is our data record when we dropped it to 500 tons. Now I'm going to make another change and this is just to drop the wet bulb temperature to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The big uh, change here is the reduction in fan speed again uh, just due to the lower wet bulb temperature and the cooling tower doesn't have to work as hard. Our power demand uh, is about 247-250 kilowatts and uh, the chiller efficiency is 0 0.493 uh, and the chiller plant cooling load is 491 tons. We're experiencing a little bit of variability here but that's all due to the cooling tower algorithms with the fan speed at or below 40 percent. So now we have the chiller KW per ton about 0 0.65, 0 0.66. Going to be a very small difference at this point. And we have the plant KW per ton at about 0 0.66, 0 0.65. Again, we have not done any condenser water temperature reset at this point. We just dropped the wet bulb temperature. There's been virtually no change. It's a small amount, maybe due to a reduction and fan speed. All right, now uh, I reduced the condenser water temperature to 80 degrees and took a set of data and now I'm going to reduce it again to 75 degrees and take some more data. So input 75 degrees. That's our manual condenser water temperature set point. So now with a 75 degree uh, condensed water temperature set point, our fan speed is increased to about 51 percent, maybe 52, and uh, we're operating at 75.1 degrees condensed water temperature. Our chiller power demand has dropped to 200 kilowatts. Chiller efficiency is now 0.403 kW per ton and we still have the cooling load of 497 tons. So now we're beginning to see what condensed water reset can really do for us. And we want to see what the uh, uh, total plant kW per ton and it's about 0.55 kW per ton. So here I input this data and as you can see, if we, when we drop the entering uh, condensed water temperature, we increase the fan speed, increasing its power usage, but we improve the chiller efficiency by quite a bit, resulting in an overall plant efficiency improvement. All right, so I uh, ran through two more scenarios and uh, I dropped the entering condensed water temperature to 70 degrees and we got a um, reduction in chiller efficiency to 0.355 and a plant efficiency of 0.52 so not a big change in plant efficiency and then I went ahead and went down to uh, drop the entering condensed water temperature to 65 degrees I also dropped the wet bulb to 40 degrees because I didn't want to get into something called cooling tower relief at this point. I'll explain cooling tower relief in my next video. But anyway, so fan speed dropped to 61% uh, chiller kilowatt. We're down to a chiller efficiency of 0.303 kW per ton, still at 597 uh, tons of load, and we're down to a 0.48 plant efficiency. So now we're going to enter a, an entering uh, the uh, temperature set point at 61 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we can review the results with 61 degree condensed water temperature and we see our cooling tower fan speed now is up to 75 percent. And our 
Power demand is 131 kW. Chiller efficiency, 0.263 kW per ton. And, well, looks like 500 tons, huh? Well, actually, 498 here. And we'll look at the overall chiller plant efficiency, 0.46. I want to take one more reading with uh, uh, condenser water temperature set point of 60 degrees. And I dropped the wet bulb temperature to 36. And we're really at the lower limits of the cooling tower simulator, those algorithms I was talking about earlier. So now with a 60 degree condenser water temperature set point, and a load of uh, a little bit above 450 tons. And we can look and see that we have a fan speed at about 75% and uh, our condensed water, actual condensed water temperature. And um, we have um, 117 kilowatts is our power demand. 0.256 kW per ton. Looks like 458 tons. And overall chiller plant efficiency is 0.48. So with that last change, we didn't really accomplish a lot. And we're really getting down to the limits of where the condenser water pump and the um, cooling tower energy use is um, commanding more of the plant load. So here is a summary of how this condenser water reset works. And we're dealing with the refrigerant pressure in the condenser because that determines the flow rate of refrigerant. And the cold water temperature uh, determines the pressure of the refrigerant in the condenser. And you need a higher pressure for the chiller to meet its rated capacity with a required flow rate of refrigerant. But when you reduce the water temperature, this reduces the gas pressure in the condenser. And that then reduces the work required for the compressor and reduces its power input. With a low water temperature, your capacity is limited. If demand for more capacity increases, at this point, the chiller may not properly respond. Well, it will not re respond unless you increase the condenser water temperature. So the compressor will try to respond by speeding up, but the capacity doesn't increase, and you start wasting energy. So the point is that careful implementation of this strategy is required to ensure a safe and reliable operation at all times. So here's the complete data set, which you can uh, peruse at your leisure. If you'd like to contact me, I have my email address down here, and I'd like a little bit of feedback or questions.